Hey, hey, happy Sunday, uh, October the 18th, 2020. So this is a bit of a follow-up video to uh, the Hillier video about him uh, addressing Parliament, the Liberals, about these COVID uh, centers that are in unmarked, undesignated locations that also serve for a latitude of reasons. And uh, this is ultimately what the main purpose is going to be for. Um, so we've already been hit with the disease. They know things are going to be different for a long time. They have to accommodate it. The main reason is going to be to continue to accept immigration uh, for what we've promised over the next few years. Now, a latitude of reasons include instances like in Quebec and BC. I know of a couple instances where uh, people weren't following the COVID rules for their area and they were taken away and detained somewhere. So that's medical police coming in now. Kind of funny, Netflix manages to put out interesting shows that go on or coincide with interesting things in the environment. Cuties, ugh, terrible, terrible. I was going to make a video on that, but it's just so awful. I didn't want to go near it really. Um, and medical police, they made a show called that, kind of funny. Space Force, it's kind of funny too, or whatever. It does a good job of making fun of Pelosi and Schumer and AOC. It's actually pretty funny shit. Dry, but funny. Anyway, so, <laughs> so this is going to be the main thing. Now, <clears throat> granted, this was published, uh, you know, almost a year ago. And it was updated just shortly afterwards. So there isn't much change to this, so it, it might not make sense why this would even be relevant anymore considering the COVID situation that we're in right now. Um, however, um, when we come to this by Canada Visa, which is run by Campbell Cohen, uh, <clears throat> who is a, like a civil liberties lawyer or something like that. Anyway, this is his business, and it's in the business of making sure that immigration stays on track. Uh, they talk about and work with the government uh, with some of the things that are going on that I'll discuss with uh, plans for placement. But this is still what's projected, and as I said, <clears throat> that other article, although a year old and just prior to COVID being a thing, uh, this was last updated just two days ago. And so you can see they're still on track for an increased number of immigrants and refugees every year for the next couple of years. And that's these centers are mainly going to be used for is continuing to accept and quarantine people as they come in and come through. But again, they're also used for a latitude of reasons and certain people have been put in them already. Depending on how wild and out of control things get, um, who knows who else could end up in those places where no one really knows where they are apparently at least that's what i know so far i know that they're also talking about or i've heard certain people of influence let's say because that's how this all gets started talking about racism being a pandemic so if you start opposing things like uh the communist group black lives matter that uses a whole bunch of people for its for its means because of the way it's set up um you know, maybe you end up being re-educated. I don't know if that's going to happen for sure. But, I mean, we've seen some pretty crazy stuff go down already. So, it's hard to say, you know. It's it's concerning, that's for sure. It's, no one trusts the government these days. You either hate one side of the government or the other, you know what I'm saying. But, anyway, that's the biggest takeaway from, from this. I mean, you've got the article here. If you want to read it, I'm not going to waste all your time. If you want to get into it yourself and try to see what you can find or whatever yourself and we go ahead but to me it's all just it's about the funding because of course this is all tax funded things it'll cover etc etc people that it wants etc etc so anyway <clears throat> this is one of the programs that it works with right now it's called the cr uh ni <laughs> program pilot program and it's um about placing people uh, in rural areas, obviously, throughout Canada that are coming in uh, for, through immigration. And that's why they have to build these facilities in almost every province because uh, these are the places that they plan on building. Essentially, they want to build 
near or place near certain metropolitan areas down here see near census metro areas within 75k of um <clears throat> to be located in alberta bc and manitoba nyt um nunavut ontario saskatchewan and yukon so so uh excluded from this are the eastern provinces and quebec uh, i've got another group that works that's a government program that's what this is this is a real deal um and it's like I say, designed to sort of set up neighborhoods essentially for people that are coming over. Because despite the fact they talk about integration, Canadian integration has never looked like, I guess, what they're trying to get to now, which is like this true intermixing of people all over the place. And it's never happened because people culturally gravitate towards their own people, which is why Chinatown and, you know, Italian parts of areas ukrainian towns in canada and french towns and obviously a french province happen because people don't uh want to make a full shift in their life and culture uh they're, they're usually quite comfortable with it at any rate this is government's attempt in my opinion to use psychology and uh, getting after your kids early in school propaganda creating an enemy out of people who are more nationalist by calling that fascist by nature when really i mean a, a true canadian nationalist would actually be someone who believes in uh, full liberalism and everything that's opposite of the united states that's always been canada's dig because when the united states was doing its thing separating from king george the loyalists up here uh had to have a certain amount of propaganda to keep them uh the people from going for that so there's always been this anti-american uh we're better than you thing that's been built and maintained throughout time <laughs> so anyway that's that's canada's nationalism it decides that woo, we're better than the states so we're going to do the opposite because the states is bad and always has been since you know 400 years ago 300 years ago when when the beginnings of all these things were happening anyway moving along um <laughs> This is the other one, the Atlantic Immigration Pilot. And so uh, this is something that in news articles was revealed to be a, at first a temporary stationing of about 4,000 people. And now they seek to add another 5,000 people. And this is short range planning. But it sounds like they're building like a whole community. Um, the provinces that this takes place in are uh new brunswick nova scotia or sorry new brunswick newfoundland and uh prince edward island so these are all the eastern provinces part of the program so you have rural northern immigration pilot for all the other aforementioned provinces and these are for the eastern provinces we have no mention yet of quebec which is not surprising because in a way they've uh <laughs> they were already playing playing identity politics they didn't want to be fully canadian and so they don't fully participate in a sense and they tend to benefit more than they give back as i've said before but you know for newcomers to my channel there uh, i was a journey am a journeyman with a red seal the red seal means i can work in every other province in canada according to their codes uh, with the exception of quebec so they maintain no one else is allowed to work there but they can fan out and work anywhere themselves and i don't hold anything against french people specifically i live in alberta we had a lot of french people move here too when the boom was on nothing wrong with them and you know they're just people whatever but you know the governing behind the people is of course what brings the bitterness in every situation so anyway there's a couple things going on that supports uh like i say this and it supports these detention centers or basically quarantine slash detention centers and at any rate this is uh marco mendicino he's replaced uh ahmed hassan is the immigration officer for canada now minister of immigration i should say sorry so anyway he's in charge of all this and he, just bringing that up quickly because this is a letter from Trudeau to him, which is going to be the outline for immigration in Canada right now. Um, I'm not going to read through all this. I usually read stuff in my videos to a certain extent because I believe everything's important, but I guess highlight, right? So basically what it is, this is of course it's outlining 
Um, essentially, the BLM or the IBLM in Canada, we have Indigenous Black Lives Matter. And uh, I mean, don't get me wrong, I'm, I'm all for everybody having an equal shot at everything. But I'm not for you using Marxist means to make sure that you get it to me whether you deserve it or not. They, they continually talk about merit and yet everything that they're suggesting is counterintuitive to what merit means. So anyway, I'm not going to read all Trudeau's drivel, but we'll get to some of the important things here. So we are committed to evidence-based, <laughs> okay, sure, uh, decision-making that takes into consideration the impacts of policies on all Canadians. I'm sure there is some sort of evidence they're looking at, but it's their solutions that aren't going to work in the long run because they haven't yet anyway in hundreds of years, thousands of years, because this is all Babylonian, Roman, Assyrian style, well, not Assyrian, but other, other na old school nations that took over groups of people, integrated them, charged them all taxes, so it's an elite game. And, uh, you know, you can be who you are, but you can't fight with each other anymore, where they used to war with each other. And that's essentially what we're still going through now. So there is a benevolent side to it, for sure. You know, even in North America, where at one time, you know, war was constant, nonstop between everybody who lived here, everybody who showed up here, they all fought each other. It was all bad. I'm not even going to get into the details, because it was horrifying. On everyone's count, there was no uh, just peaceful and fishing and whatever else going on here. There was raiding and everything else. Like everyone else was doing it. So, <clears throat> but now it's not like that. Of course, there's still issues that they're trying to iron out using things like the Indian Act and other methods to try to squeeze people into segregating, or sorry, integrating. Um, of course, they'll segregate, like I say, naturally. Anyway, that's what they're trying to break out of us by using propaganda and psychology is this biological need to sort of be around people that are like you, but at any rate. Um, <laughs> Evidence-based decision-making. So anyway, in the consideration, the impacts of, of policies on all Canadians and fully uh, defends the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedom, uh, Freedoms. You apply gender-based analysis plus in the decisions that you make. So <clears throat> what is GBA? It is essentially a system that's been created. Uh, it was created you know, over before 1995, and that's when it was introduced uh, to the United Nations at a meeting in Beijing, of all places. Um, that sort of a, a, makes the claim to tackle women's issues in the world, but it also manages to throw a whole bunch of other things in on top of it and lump it in with it. So we'll get back to that. But we'll go through this first at any rate and where this comes from. Um, so what is GBA? GBA is an analytical process that provides a rigorous method for the assessment of systematic inequalities as well as means to assess how diverse groups of women, men, and gender diverse people may experience policies, programs, and initiatives. So how does the government affect the way you live? Because that's figured to be needed at any rate. The plus in GBA plus acknowledges that GBA plus is not just about differences between biological sexes and socio-cultural genders. Uh, meaning this is to do with society creates gender roles, which has been proven to be nonsense. Um, it's actually society grew around gender specific roles because we were hunter-gatherers and it just made more sense to maintain, uh, you know, the, the life that you had where it was easier for mom to stay at home with the kids and do all the house stuff while dad went out and, you know, worked and slaved and went to war and did all that shit. Um, and that was time eternal. <laughs> so, so this is the nonsense term that we're, that we have put upon us. This is what Jordan Peterson encounters a lot is that this is nonsense. And he does so with scientific backup. Um, he debates some very, very hysterical, radical uh, people in, in uh, favor of radical feminism with it and kind of puts them to shame because the evidence doesn't suggest it. Anyway, we all have multiple characteristics that intersect and contribute to who we are. Sure, that's true, but I think that that should allow us... <laughs> 
to allow our individuality to shine through all of that. So there's a little hint of truth in there, but then they get back into that it considers many other identity factors such as race, ethnicity, religion, age, and mental or physical disability, which are not identity factors as far as comparing them uh, to the multiple characteristics that intersect to who we are. I mean, yes, these do play a role. Of course they do. But at the same time, no one across any of these agree with each other on every single thing. Which is true of all of this as well. And so it actually highlights that our individuality is more important and that that's what they're cudgeling with, uh, with all this crazy psychology they're trying to utilize to force people together who don't, like I say, really actually want to. People would rather just be, be with their own. And I'm not saying that they have to. I mean, do what you will. Do what you want. That's what I'm saying. So if you want to chill with people like that you're comfortable with and, you know, have the same holidays and whatever as you, I don't blame you. Everyone does. Everyone, including the people that are pushing this the most. In fact, they want to be the most identifiable and the most distinct. So we'll get into that at some point, too. Anyway. <clears throat> GBA plus considers many other factors, yada, yada, and how the interaction between these factors influence the way we might experience government policies and initiatives, which essentially means, I mean, they're talking about it like as if it's the, uh, it's already affecting you. And although that's true, it's still the involvement of government. And that's, what's going to be used to leverage all this through. It's not going to be about merit. Like they claim it's going to be about, forcing people to have X number of whatever hired in or available in certain levels of government. It's going to dictate it as a legislation, the same as C-16. They're probably going to try to, and really policy becomes legislation. This is policy. I don't believe you could say any of this is legislated, but when a political party comes in and makes something a policy, it means that that's what you voted for. So a policy supersedes a bill. It doesn't even have to be a legal bill written out. Because the policy was voted for as part of the pol uh, political um, government uh, writings uh, policies. I mean, you voted for it, you get it. Anyway, that's so it's a, a sneaky way to sidestep actual law and then just put your policies in place, which is a lot of what the UN stuff is. I mean, it doesn't it's not it doesn't give itself a visible link to telling us what to do. It just states these are suggestions, and yet they're always always used. So. At any rate, in 1995, uh, the government of Canada committed to using GBA to advance gender equality in Canada as part of the ratification of the UN Nations Beijing Platform for Action. So we'll talk about that now since it's being mentioned. The bigger things that I took from this is women's empowerment and their full participation on the basis of equality in all spheres of society including participation in the decision-making process and access to power are fundamental for the achievement of equality, development, and peace. Uh, women's rights are human rights. We'll talk about this a little bit first because, <clears throat> so they're talking about the empowerment, empowerment, the words are important. Um, so I mean, to get on board with this, it has to be looked at that women didn't have power prior to 1995, which is not true, and get a whole bunch of women on board with it. And the policies and politics that women are involved with now are all about things like open borders and this full amount of inclusiveness. And it's natural for a woman to do that. I think it's natural maybe for a man to some degree to do that. But it, uh, when it's framed that everyone's a victim in the classes that they def choose to defend, it preys on their psychology to be protective mothers, sometimes overprotective mothers. It's an archetype, it's a known thing, it's a psychological thing. That's what this propaganda capitalizes on. And when you end up getting, and I don't mean to be insulting, but certain women in positions of power in a place where that's the way it's framed, now they must do things radically different to the way they were done before, is where you end up getting Germany or New Zealand or... Well, those are the best examples between Merkel and I can't recall the New Zealand's prime minister, but I mean, essentially where they accept a bunch of unaccepting groups in and when violence goes down, 
Um, they essentially cuck up to it, probably because they don't want to admit that they're wrong. They will want to believe that the woman, the female Gaia within them can heal all. And as long as we keep hating the real haters, which is, of course, the people who already live there in the first place that are being accosted to the point where there is uh, bad results, you know, that's what's being used to to batter this politics through and to keep it going. It's the use of that psychology. So, at any rate, moving on, it also says on the full participation on the basis of equality. So now, as I already read, they show that uh, the charter is based on equality, but then they start talking about equity right away. And that's what this ultimately is, because it talks about including participation in the decision-making process and access to power are fundamental for the achievement of equality, equity, development, and peace. Because we are already creating an equal society prior to having women in power. In fact, it was men who were in parliament <laughs> when women's suffrage was passed. So women absolutely had power. NGOs and people who speak out were enough if there was people behind them. They just needed the voice, the right message, and the movement to make it happen. So, but now we're looking at a place where equality is, using, is being used as a word for equity and the government is going to be used to leverage positions in. And that's the way it's going to be. The people will go for it because they've already got the psychology rigged that you're just going to vote for what they want anyway which is all of this. And it's scary. It's scary if you know about Yuri Bezmenov and you know about what subversion looks like inside of a nation because it not, it never addresses all the bad things that has happened in all of this. You're not allowed to. Um, society's been recreated to a point where it's self-destructing in the West and you're not allowed to talk about that no matter how bad it is. It just gets covered up and, and plowed on because if you speak out against it, you're an ist or an ism of some kind anyway. Human, women's rights are human rights. Of course they are. Uh, human rights, or sorry, equal rights, opportunities, and access to resources equal sharing of responsibilities for the family by men and women, and a harmonious partnership between them are critical to their well-being and that of their families as well as to the consolidation of democracy. So if you believe, like I do, <laughs> that the United Nations is absolutely connected to... Um, communist foundations as well, um, then you'll see this is all doublespeak. This is all being used and fomented against the countries that they want to rule over. They're doing things like destroying the basic foundation of the family. Uh, that's essentially what this is. Equal sharing of the responsibilities uh, for the family by men and women. So more women need to be in the workplace. Therefore, more people can be taxed. Your kids will end up being looked after by either government or uh, secondary babysitter instead of being raised by their family, separation from family. Um, and so there's a, mere, a couple of reasons why that's done. It breaks down traditional family structures, which is something the Marxists want. This, this lockstep with things like what BLM states about breaking up the nuclear family is part of their mandate and goal. Um, and other earlier communist movements were no different. It's like all this Huxley, like, uh, family doesn't matter anymore. It'll just control you with your pleasure instead of your pain. But at any rate, um, and a harmonious partnership between them are critical for their well-being and that of their families as well as to the consolidation of democracy. So now you have propaganda thrust in there that we won't have consolidation of democracy unless this happens. And really, it's uh, I've seen more, more, maybe more bad things happen because of it. Just assuming that because women haven't been in power, that if we just add them to the equation, everything will magically be better is preposterous. There have been female leaders throughout history. Some are good, some are bad. Big surprise, humans are kind of like that. <laughs> in fact, some of the people who've done some of the greatest things have also taken part in some of the most horrid things. Fascinating thing that people want to frame... Uh, folks is either good or bad and reality is we're actually a little bit of both and it's what we're doing in the moment that matters the most so uh, people just don't even know how to think about themselves or about humanity in the first place and that's why they're so easy to control with all this nonsense so anyway we'll go back to this a little bit more here it's like i say it's basically being forced and shoved in that's why they need these immigration is key to altering our society 
And I would also say relieving other places of uh, the burden of extra people around them that they don't want there. So anyway, you'll do, uh, Mr. What's his name again? Sorry. Oh, whatever. Mendocino. My bad. You'll uh, do your part to continue our government's commitment to transparent. So this is already bullshit. Our government is not transparent, especially the Trudeau government. Merit-based, which isn't true. He shoved as many women as he could into his office as soon as he got in, simply based on this stuff, and not for no other reason than that. Uh, based appointments to help ensure that people of all gender identities, indigenous peoples, racialized peoples, persons with disabilities, and minority groups are reflected in positions of leadership. And they also include mental disabilities as part of this as well. Where is that? Yeah, we need to finish this too. That's what led into the Beijing platform where I talk about that a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. We'll just get into the myths. While many advances have been made, significant equality gaps remain. Today, even women in Canada who work full-time earn, on average, only 87 cents to every dollar earned by men. According to Statistics Canada 2017, women are also more often the victims of domestic and sexual violence. We'll stop there because the first thing to address is this, is that this has always been that way. And even with all of the increase of women in the workforce, it's still that way. But it isn't because they get paid less. Now, I'm not saying they don't get paid the same everywhere. There probably are some places that get away with lower wages here and there. But if it was ever discovered, because it's already a law that you can't do that, it can be addressed immediately on an individual basis as it's discovered. Um, so it's not allowed. So, But it gets used as political leverage uh, in order to foment this goal that's not so good, right? And the reason why this is, if you listen to Thomas Sowell, he already nailed this 40, 50 years ago, that it's because men on average work more, work longer, take on more dangerous jobs that are worth more money because it's the only way to get a guy to do it, or you're away from home and it's the only way to get a guy to do it. And today, because uh, we're already post-1995 when all this stuff was being implemented, I grew up alongside women who were working out in the patch, working as welders, making more money than me sometimes, and, uh, you know, a higher skill level than me too, because that's what they worked on doing their pipe welding and stuff, right? So, um, there's no equality gap. The equal chance for those women to outdo me at my own job were there, and they did when they could, because that's the kind of person they were, and they took it on. So this is, again, propaganda. They're talking about an equity gap. They're fucking lying, and you need to see this and figure it out, because uh, Krista Freeland is, was uh, helping run the government. I've been pulled over and uh, questioned and searched by female police. I've had female lawyers before. <laughs> Equality is absolutely available. In fact, uh, equality to uh, opportunity is such that some women make more than other women at the same job. I'm sure there's female lawyers out there who charge more than other ones that are better at it. So there's this issue of merit that's true, but then there's this issue of why we need the government to, to boost it because we have these low numbers. And so that's the lie and that's the trickery that's going on to make all this nonsense happen. Women stay home with the kids more, they're pregnant. Um, all these things lead to this number difference. There's no fucking equality cap. Ugh. Women are also more often the victims of domestic and, domestic and sexual violence. Well, that's a justice issue. Uh, typical, this is a hereditary uh, psychology. Not meaning that it's passed down genetically. It's passed down by the characteristics of your family, which is what will lead to this stuff. So that's a justice issue that needs to be dealt with. Putting women in higher positions of power has already done nothing, in my opinion, to stop this. There's probably other things on the whole that have stopped this, and I would say great, less wealth inequality. Women can leave. Women can go get a job. Women don't need men anymore, etc., etc. Um, 
I don't know what else to say. Uh, they uh, also continue to be upper represented in leadership. Well, that's because uh, they're not interested anyway. And executive positions occupying just 23% of board positions in Canada's top 500 corporations. <sighs> Government Board Diversity Council 2017 report card states this. The gap is even larger for women with particular intersecting identity factors such as trans women and women with a disability. Of course, those things are more difficult. People with all people with disabilities have a harder time. I don't know how many dudes I've seen in wheelchairs that are Walmart greeters. Trans women have a hard time because men and women in society are uncomfortable around them. They typically frame it that it's a male thing, but lots of women are uncomfortable with it too. Especially now that it's starting to invade sports, and there's a lot of genetic women that are being beat up or outdone by genetic men. And it's uh, starting to show itself to be quite the problem to try to influence these social changes, government changes through government action, C-16 and this, etc. Uh, when ultimately there's there are some issues with it. Uh, some of them are really bad. Anyway, gender equality benefits for everyone in the society, and GBA can improve the situations of women, men, and gender uh, diverse people. For example, in the same way that women were left out of heart disease research because it was seen as a man's disease, men have historically been overlooked in osteoporosis research. While osteoporosis is also uh, often considered a disease of postmenopausal women, men actually account for nearly nearly a third of osteoporosis-related hip fractures. So, like maybe two to three people out of ten. Um, Wait a minute, a third. Yeah, so 33%. Yeah, that's right. Anyway, uh, limited data for gender diverse individuals is an indicator that the impacts on gender diverse people have not been sufficiently considered in different initiatives. <sighs> this is science. Women were left out of science by some of the big pharma that's still in control today. <laughs> so... I mean, that's why that was. I don't think it's for any reason other than that, and that's fixed now. So, I mean, they're using old stuff to try to justify new stuff, and it's, well, that it doesn't exist anymore anyway. I've had female doctors, too, and by the way, she did a terrible job on the stitching. I mean, I wish I could afford a plastic surgeon to fix the ugly fucking scar that she left on me. At any rate, um, myth. GBA only applies to women issues. Uh, it is advocacy for women. GBA is not advocacy. It is an analytical process designed to help us ask questions, uh, challenge assumptions, and identify political impacts, taking into account the diversity of Canadians. In addition to sex and gender, GBA considers all identity factors such as race, ethnicity, religion, age, mental, and physical disability. Like I was saying, mental disability will now be considered for government roles because they have to represent them. It's not good enough that someone more competent represents them, I guess. Once an issue has undergone the GBA process, gender may emerge as the most important factor, okay? While in other cases it might be any or a combination of factors and in their intersection that influence a person's experience of a government policy program or initiative. Why they would say gender would influence it the most, in my opinion, is again, it comes back to the uh, overprotective mother archetype. If you get that kind of people in politics, you will be able to introduce socialism, communism in a country pretty friggin' quick. Uh, your department's mandate could also impact your entry point for GBA. It might begin with your ethnicity or disability. <laughs> Regardless of the entry point, every human cell has a sex and every person is gendered and sex and gender must not be neglected in your analysis. So again, when I was taught in school that stereotypes weren't important, judge people by their who they are because you don't want to drive over individuals with a group identity thought. Now everything's being taught opposite and the government is pushing it. So this is started not too long after I would have learned this in school, like the year after, two years after. And that's pretty right. That's when the millennials kind of really started to get their personality. I was the tail end of Gen X and you can see the blending of sort of millennial type thought mixed with the Gen X type thought around my generation. It was being blended. I was born in 80, so between there and 82, they call the millennial generation. But I hung out with older kids because I didn't like the kids I was growing up with. Most of them were fucking retards. So I just, I prefer to hang out with older people at any rate. We'll read on a little more here. The all government policies and programs affect people. While gender and diversity issues may be more obvious in some areas, such as education and health, 
uh, and, and less obvious in others, such as natural resources and defense. This does not necessarily mean that gender is not relevant. Actually, you know, I mean, <laughs> ah, boy, oh boy. So education and health currently is dominated by women and no one is doing anything about getting more men into it. Uh, the teachers at my kid's school kind of gloat about it. They think it's hilarious that there's no men left at the school that I grew up, went to school in myself anymore. And less obvious than others, such as natural resources and defense. Yeah, that's because women don't want to put their asses on the line as often. And natural resources means uh, doing shitty oil field jobs. So most women don't want to do it. Only ones who really want to prove themselves or genuinely want the money because it's the only way or the best way they can make it. You're not going to be a lawyer, but you can run a good beat. Well, whatever, you can make cash. Uh, GBA can has been used in all federal sectors and domains, as we've seen. For example, using GBA Plus to assess large-scale procurement projects uh, can help to ensure that equipment and products meet diverse needs. This is more extension of socialism. If we get the right people in pining for their needs, we can figure out how the government needs to supply them. It can also help to ensure that strong hiring strategies are implemented within the public surface to ensure workplace diversity. And this is something that you've seen in CBC. So after Bill 16 was signed and, and pushed through, um, we ended up with a lot of people that are trans and gay starting to write articles for CBC. And that was all that they wrote about to the point where it was blue in the face. And that's where a lot of cancel culture ends up coming from and where a lot of people got sick of it after a while because when they ran out of people to go for and the news got old, they went for some of the people who helped put them in those places. So good job not hiring really merit over gender, uh, some kind of identity, you know, it's just ridiculous anyway. So anyhow, main, main thing about all this to take away, actually, sorry, here, one, one little funny thing. Um, this is from Cohen Campbell. This is a review done on a, a site that advertises employment for him through his his uh, legal practice of bringing immigrants into Canada. And <laughs> this was the best one. Don't recommend. I worked at Campbell Cohen full time for less than a year. Pros, flexible hours, sometimes weekends could be left alone in office. A lot of people say that about it. Cons, superficial and misogynistic work environment. Very bad management. They don't care about immigration, only care about making money. We'll scam people and make them pay when they know there's no chance they could qualify for a visa. Advice to management, stop. So that's when uh, it actually starts to work against them. Uh, some of the other reviews, I'm not going to go through all of them. You can if you want to, but go find it. There's the web page. Uh, you know, they all kind of say the good parts in common. Uh, most of this doesn't take place in the cons, but some of them kind of look like the way they're so consistent, like almost doctored. That's just my opinion, but at any rate. So anyhow, that gets back to uh, things to do with the United Nations and their survey, which is uh, how has COVID affected your life as a woman and living in a third world country, essentially. A lot of questions to do with that. So we have now COVID and female migrants and all that being lumped together and pushed through. And uh, we have these centers to receive people in for it. And that's what the big deal about those centers are really going to be about. But as I've said, other people have been sent to them um, for disobeying lockdown restrictions. And uh, who knows what else we could see them for in the future. Um, racism as a pandemic is something that I've heard on the lips and minds of some people who ended up being influential. Uh, in the politics that uh, we see taking place with all of this stuff that I just showed. So so that's what's going on with that. I just thought I'd do a video on that, just to clarify, so that it's not just a scary concentration camp thing. It's Canada, it's probably not going to be like that. It's going to be even more about re-education. Imprisonment is probably a way to look um, for if things don't go well. But, I mean, they do it slow enough that, you know, we just kind of eat it and... Uh, of course, the Liberal government wants to hide what these centers are, mostly because while everyone is shut down, locked down, and, and strung out and burnt out because of it and depressed and all the bad things that have happened, they don't want for a second to let you know that they're not only continuing to bring immigrants in, but that they're also increasing the numbers each year and using these centers to quarantine and uh, allow it to happen. So, so I thought that was important for everyone to know. Sorry the video goes on for a little bit, but there's enough good information in there. It should be worth it. 
like, share, and subscribe uh, if you like the material. And, uh, yeah, thanks for watching. Have a good weekend. The rest of your weekend. Sorry about this sort of being bad news, but, I mean, the only way to counter bad news is to be educated on it. So, peace out.